actually, um, recently while I was, I knew I had this uh, speaking engagement coming up, and I was working on a project at home. We have two little boys, Calvin and Oliver, and um, I don't really have a lot of interest or time for scrapbooking. Um, and I decided though that they really needed some proper photo albums or little scrapbooks to look through because I had those that the kids would really love. So there's, everyone has Instagram, or a lot of you have Instagram. I have a personal Instagram account and a business Instagram account. And there's this really cool website called Printstagram. So you can go to Printstagram and it allows you to open up your Instagram account. And there's a template to create a photo album. And you basically just click and insert your images into this template and create this really beautiful little hardcover book. So I decided, oh, this is perfect. This is just going to take me a couple of hours. I can sit down. I can order these books. So, and that's really what happened. It was great. So we got the books in the week, and they're beautiful. But the exercise of creating the books had me sit down and look at my Instagram images, you know, hundreds of them, differently than I had ever seen them before. I always looked at um, those images on my phone. You know, I can scroll through and like stuff. And like, oh, you comment or you send it to a friend. Wait till you see this. So I was sitting here, walking away, doing things in the house, and coming back. And what I noticed in looking at all of these probably 50 images at once on the screen was that there was this very distinct pattern. There was a very distinct. Um, I don't know if emotion is the right word, vibe about what I was drawn to. And it wasn't just the color, it wasn't just the, um, the subject matter, it was how close I liked to get to the subject, it was um, the mood that the image would evoke. It was very consistent. It was really interesting. You know, um, it wasn't anything I was looking for, it certainly wasn't anything that happened by design, it had just happened. And I kind of loved it. I was like, oh, this is really cool. You know, when you discover something new about yourself or whatever it is, it's just sort of, it's kind of cool. So I was, I was like, oh, I wonder what other Instagram accounts look like when you blow them up like this. So I started to look. And I have this friend. Can you all see? So there are other chairs up here too, by the way. But um, I have this friend, Mike Weber. He is a painter. He's an artist in California. And he always posts images of um, the most remarkable places. He travels to all the national forests. And he tries to get very close to the wildlife, as you can see, so that you can get these up-close images because he paints these very realistic portraits of wildlife, these contemporary portraits. And you know, there's a very clear story here. It's nature and water and sky and sunset and grass. And um, it's so alive. and. And you can see in his color palette, okay, here's where conduit did some really cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, you can see these are actually the hues that were pulled right out of the images that you were just seeing. And it's a very natural, um, you know, earthy, but vibrant, grassy palette. And knowing Mike, I'm sure this isn't, again, by design, this is just kind of what happened next. So, then I, I don't know how I started following this one particular woman. Her name is Annika von Holt, which is so great, such a great name. And her images always strike me when I see them because they're so, they look expensive. Like she just looks like she's living in this taupe cloud, you know? For, <laughs> she has a taupe cat, and her son is always wearing, like, you know, sun washed neutrals. And <laughs> so here she is, you know. She's just divine. But there's sort of like a loneliness to her images. I mean, look at the cat. It's just staring at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, again, it feels like this cloud, you know? And so here's her palette. And isn't it just dreamy and beautiful? But it's not very warm and fuzzy. Um, and then, I don't know, I was talking to someone earlier about Simon Dunant. And he's one of my favorite characters. He writes these delicious books. They're so, so funny. It's really in your face, like in your face and rude but funny and you just love him. He's kind of crazy and all of his images are, you know, just 
so funny and crazy, and he's willing to take all this risk. He doesn't care what he looks like, give the cameras up his nose. And, um, and then his color palette is just like a circus, uh, which is so fun. And it's like that all the time. That's what his whole hundreds of pictures look like. And then lastly, um, we have JR, who is kind of this renegade um, graffiti public installation artist. And his work is, is very large scale, and he takes a lot of risk um, when he gets involved with the project. And it's usually about some statement about oppression or politics. And, um, it's very cerebral. It's, it's, it's deep, you know, and it's serious. And there's sometimes sort of a dark or a punk edge to it, I would say, because of the way he installs his work illegally sometimes. Um, and so there's sort of like this edginess I kind of look and see brain matter, you know, with when I see his his color palette. So looking at all of these Instagram accounts, it was really interesting. And I know that some of it is by design, you know. I, I know that there are probably some people who very carefully curate what they're going to put up and they have an, an intent in mind. But I believe too that there is just an innate pattern, there's an innate um, perspective that we have, and it's colored by things. You know, my, my perspective is colored by where I grew up, where I live now, who's in my life, what I'm doing today, what I'm going to be able to do tomorrow. It's all uh, shaping how I see the world and what I'm willing to stop and take a picture of, what I think is worth taking a picture of and sharing with the world can be telling. So uh, I, I think one of the things we see happening with social media that's talked about quite often is is this real? Is what people see on Instagram and Facebook and House and Pinterest, is it real? Is this really how people are living? Like, is Annika, you know, sort of this tote ghost on the beach? Um, <laughs> 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 you know, is Mike really a tree cover? Does he ever eat Cheetos? <laughs> so it's it's kind of like, what's real and what, what isn't real? And that comes up a lot. And these are actually, oh look, it's kind of good. <laughs> these are these are images of our work, and you'll see a lot of variety in the style and in the color palette. And what's really important to me as a designer is to listen to my client. And most people really know what they want to be surrounded by. They do, even if they don't know. Somewhere in there, you know what is going to feel right, what's going to feel good when you live with it. And sometimes. Um, you just need someone to listen to you and kind of echo back or hold up a mirror and say, no, 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 you don't need that because your neighbor has it. This is what you really love. And I really believe that that is a, a primary goal or a, it's a priority for me um, in my work. And so I do love the fact that our, our work reflects a lot of variety. But what's happened lately is a lot of clients go and they look at House and they look at Pinterest. And we used to say, okay, bring me some clippings from a magazine so we can kind of see what you're thinking, what you like. It's really helpful. Now, if you send someone to House or Pinterest, it almost becomes like an obsession. <laughs> so they have this huge pin board and it's enormous. And there's like, well, here's this section for this, and here's this section for that. And it's beautiful and it's helpful, but it can almost be crippling because they're trying to make it so perfect and then their own voice, their own little voice, is like, you know, that's really not you. It just gets lost because they're trying to craft like, this perfect idea. And then give it to us, give it to me, and then I'm supposed to give them that. Which is just a big bummer. <laughs> because I don't want to give them that. Let's do something better. Let's do something more creative. So, but you can't blame them, right? It's, it's just natural. We're trying to find ways to, to put our ideas together and, and to create. So I think, um, okay, so this is Conduit on photo shoot day. Oh, oh, let's go back to Conduit on photo shoot day. Okay, so this is Conduit on photo shoot day. Perfectly styled. It, this is really what it looks like all the time. I'm a Conduit, I'm a perfect <laughs> client. So when I come here, it's always perfect. It always looks perfect, everything. I get like a busy water and it's perfectly presented. I love, I love to come here with busy water. Um, so this is conduit on photo shoot day, which is beautiful, it's beautiful. But when it's really fabulous in here, 
is when Conduit throws a party. So when the people fill up the room and the empty wine glasses are sitting on the end tables and it's filled with the color of life, that's when it's really, really good. That's when it feels alive. And that's when it feels like John and Sally and Ryan and Kelly. Um, and it feels right. And then this is about, uh, how many years ago? 2007. This is our living room in 2007 in my house. And it looks a little different today, but this is, uh, we had Better Homes and Gardens come in and shoot our home for a feature. It was very exciting because I had just started my own company about two years before, no, a year before. Calvin, our oldest, was 18 months old. So we had new baby, new business, just finished decorating the house, and then Better Homes and Gardens wants to photographs. It was so exciting, and I wanted everything to be perfect. And it really was, it felt really perfect, and um, it felt really good. But this is our house this morning. <laughs> so this is an untouched photo. <laughs> this is like you know dead flower. <laughs> um, this is Oliver in his underpants, <laughs> and these are um, assorted like things, gadgets, you know, kids use. DS, that's what it's called. <laughs> and if I had zoomed out further, I think there was like a cup of milk know, sitting on the table with drips around it. And you can see our beautiful acrylic table is now well-worn from Legos and cars. <laughs> it is no longer polished and beautiful. But honestly, I mean, this image says far more to me. I love it. This is the true color of our life, and I just love it. I mean, I'd much rather be in this room. Wouldn't you rather be in here than in the other room? I mean, the other room's great, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I love it, and I love our work, and I love what we do for our clients. But I think it's about creating and allowing room for um, that layer of life that is truly colorful, and not minding doing something that isn't quite so perfect. Um, so, back to what is real. You know, I, I look back at my Instagram account, and I see this really distinct color pattern. I mean, isn't that crazy? It's pretty, it's pretty clear, isn't it? Um, so, you know, there are also these layers when you zoom in and you see that what's really important to me is my family, <coughs> my boys, my husband, you know, time at home, in their imperfections, you know, doesn't have to be perfect. The jello, we eat jello. <laughs> There's ketchup and tater tots. And, and then I see my work and the beautiful team that I work with, these incredibly talented people and our amazing clients, and how they just fill me with purpose and um, give me an opportunity to, to be something aside from being a mom and being a wife and kind of that independent sensibility. Really, really love what I do. Dummy bears. Um, and then my friends. And we entertain in our house at least once or twice a week. We have friends in our home. Um, we don't have family here. My husband and I relocated here from Nashville, Tennessee, about 18 years ago. And our friends have become our family here. Of course, we love our family. But on a weekly basis, the people who are interacting with us and our kids are our good friends. And they make our lives really, really magical. Just wonderful things happen because of our friends. So I look at all of this and I see, you know, what is real? Well, it is real. You know, someone else could look at it and they could say, oh, work-life balance, that's a bunch of baloney. You know, I mean, they, they might look at it and see these perceptions that I have time to work and frolic with my kids. I mean, my life isn't perfect, you know, but, but what I love about it, when I look at it this way, is that um, I do have a color story. Like, I do have a signature, and I didn't, really, I didn't really know that I did. And it's pretty cool. Like, it's warm, and it's vibrant. And I think from now on, when we ask our clients how, um, or to give us inspiration, or we direct our clients on how they can give us sort of 
ideas rather than directing them to Hal's or Pinterest. I'll probably ask them to start an Instagram account if they haven't already. So now we have some time for Q&A with Catherine. Um, and to get things started, I'll pick it up. Um, when you're talking about the Pinterest and the housing, and kind of, um, right now I'm engaged, so I'm getting married, so I'm doing the same thing like, for my life. When, besides asking someone to open a, like, the Instagram account, like, well, how will you pull out like, what is authentically that person and figure out like, some questions or what kind of tools you use to get to your clients a little bit better? Usually, um, we ask a lot of questions and give them a lot of options. Before we really even get started, I'll put a lot of things in front of the client that they can react to. So I might just be testing them a little bit. Like, well, what do you think of this room? What do you think of um, this palette? How about these materials? And people will more instinctively react to things like that, more honestly react, than they will if you tell them to go away and come back with images. Because then they're kind of looking for an ideal. Where if you just put something in front of someone and say, what about this? They're going to just react. And so you get, it takes time. I mean, it takes a lot of time. It's not like you instantaneously get to know a client we, or their taste. So we work with some clients over many, many years and over generations sometimes. So um, once you get to know them, it's a beautiful thing, you know, because then this is so you when you see it. Um, but is that, yeah. So, so that's, I think, just constantly giving them something to react to. Following up on that, do you find that the people you're working with are they over time get better at articulating what they're looking for? Yes. Like? Yes. <laughs> they love it. They love it. I mean, we have one client, this is a great example. Her home was in here. It's really neutral and it's gorgeous. It's not like Hanukkah neutral, but it um, she had this very, very traditional home before. And it was formal. She has four kids. She's really busy, and her designer is sort of like I think made her feel like this is what she needed to have. I'm not making the designer wrong. Maybe she just didn't know how to speak up at that time. You know, who knows? I'm just saying that her, the look wasn't her. And when she started to discover like, she had really great taste and her ideas were awesome, and now she can't stop. It's like, I, wanna, I think I'm going to do this little project on the side, and I think I'm going to do a camper, and I'll just do the inside of the camper. Like, once you identify what really resonates with, feels so good and you don't care about the people that you know you just design it for yourself and it's, it looks great <laughs> okay. I have a question and um, just like how do you deal with the balance between their conflict and person and wife they want this color she wants this color he wants that color and then there's the house itself it might be a certain hero you know so it's got to fit with kind of that but then how do you deal with that kind of compromise that's a great question. It comes up all the time. She's asking how to deal with conflicting um, opinions within maybe a group or a couple. So uh, it happens all the time. We play psychiatrists, like psychiatrists, psychologists, <laughs> all the time. So, so really, what I do is I'm honest. I'm just honest. So if someone really loves a color, and the other person isn't willing to budge, and I think it's good for the design, I'll try to help them compromise, and I'll say, I think this color is going to. Life to the space. And this person really loves it. So are you going to allow this person to live with a little? Can we put it on some pillows? You know, or, or, I mean, I just try to help them find a way to include everyone's what they love. You know, you got to live together. And, and the other thing is, you know, the honesty is also saying no. Sometimes somebody wants something just because the other person doesn't. And I'm like, well, you can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just goes. You know, it goes and it helps them because they're like, she said, we can't have it, we can't have it, and I move on, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> I, so that's, I guess, just taking it as it comes and being very honest is my approach with that. The part about the house being true to the style of the home, um, I view architecture and decorating a little differently. I, I try to really respect the architecture of a home, be true to the architecture and what the home asks for. And begs for sometimes. And then when it comes to the layer of decorating like rugs and furniture, that's very different. I think you know you still have to use taste and
compare the laws of scale and proportion and color that you're all familiar with, but being true to the architecture I think is important. Yes? You're kind of at the crossroads in this community in terms of lots of things different in uh, uh -huh. design and in, uh, you know a lot of community, large community of artists, you know people in the business world. How does, how does that all influence, can you describe your, your role that way? Yeah, thank you. So uh, we use a lot of art in our, in our work. My house is full of art. And um, I believe that it's a significant part of a healthy house. Whether it's your kids' art or you know something really simple that you find in a frame, I, I just think that expression is really important. And I do believe it's really important for all of us in the creative community to um, to be a part of what keeps this community uh, fertile for artists and to support that in, in lots of ways. But I think when you asked about business, um, one meaningful way really is by allowing and sometimes empowering an artist to also be a good business person. So we work with artists on commissions and we expect them to deliver you know, we have contracts, we pay them, and we treat them like any other professional in, in the team. And if we commission someone to design a piece of furniture, or to build a piece of furniture, or to finish a piece of furniture, we try to work with people who are here in Grand Rapids as often as possible, most often. And again, we, we treat them like any other business person on the team. We want, we expect, we have the same expectation of them as we do the person who's building the house. So I think enabling or um, empowering artists to be stronger business-minded individuals is, is important. I do. I, I think their art is incredibly important, but unless they have an opportunity to um, make a living doing it, if that's what they so choose, it's, I think it's, it can be, I don't know if I'm saying this very well. So are you helping artists get commissions from your yeah, we do, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And it feels great. They love it. Um, and they get to meet that person. Um, so often. Sometimes they don't, you know. Yeah, and I think it, it means a lot more when you have something in your home and you know the person whose hand is built it. And maybe they built something else for you or you refer them. So it's definitely a part of our work, networking with them.
Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. And you had a question? Yeah, just a quick one. Yeah, you mentioned this a little bit earlier in your, in your talk about um, things like interest and Instagram. Just how is digital involved? How does that influence your career, both good and bad? I guess because I can see it's probably going both ways. As well as things like, obviously, you mentioned a little bit about product design. How that this new world of digital printing mm -hmm. or 3D printing, how is that maybe influenced, or, or you see that kind of evolve? First of all, I feel a lot older. <laughs> All the time. That's okay. Um, older and wiser, right? But I call John a lot more because I don't know how something works or I don't, I'm like, how should I do this? Should I be doing this? Should I be blogging? Um, and the answer is no. <laughs> um, so it is, it is really good and it is sometimes, I think overall it's fantastic. We have so much access to so much more so quickly. I mean, if I want to find out anything, I can go online and, and find it. If I want to track down um, a fabric, if we want to place orders in the middle of the night, we can do it because of all that. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, but you do have to, it, it's a shift, right, in how you think about things. And I think the, the next generation is going to be much more nimble and able to use all of those things really usefully and constructively. I mean, I use them, but I'm the first to admit, like, I don't, that's not my thing. <laughs> it, I struggle with it. So, and, and it's so rapid. That's the thing that bothers me sometimes about things like Pinterest and House. It's so rapid. I mean, today, how many people are gonna add a new idea? And then you gotta keep up with all that crap. Like, I just, <laughs> it's too much. So, so I think it's like, you know, the old, what do people say? You're trying to take a drink out of a water hose or a fire hose? The water hose is fine. <laughs> I'd rather have the water hose. I'd rather have the water hose. So, but that's maybe an old fashioned, I think. That's the honest answer.